Last week on Huskies Unleashed, we took an in-depth look at the Huskies goalkeepers and their preparation for the season. Good ahead, curve. Good, Paige, up. Good, well done. We also followed the team as they played their first scrimmage against Providence College. The game ended in a tie, but the Huskies and Coach Leon were excited about the potential for the regular season. I'm actually very pleased with our beginning point right now. Huskies Unleashed starts right now. Three for the Huskies included their first two games of the regular season. First, the team headed south to Storrs, Connecticut to take on the Yukon Huskies. Go Huskies! The Yukon game was such an unbelievable feeling. Going into it, we started off pretty shaky because obviously they're a great competitor. Um, we knew what we were getting into. They were going to be a really hard team to beat. And so in the first like 10 minutes of the game, we were a little nervous, a little shaky, not going into tackles hard enough, but we picked it up really quick. Oh, all right. <laughs> and it was just an unbelievable feeling um, after beating them. We were on such a high after that game. Five, four, three, two, one. The game ended with an exciting and well-deserved 2-1 victory for Northeastern. After the UConn game, our mentality was definitely very strong and we thought we were probably unstoppable. And it was just such an unbelievable feeling. The whole bus ride home, we were all smiling, all laughing, and just so excited for the rest of our season. So I had a few girls stay and train with me this summer. Um, Hillary Savoy was one of them. I think she's probably our most improved athlete right now as far as if you compare her um, in the weight room last year to in the, in the weight room this preseason. I mean, she was squatting maybe 95 pounds before she came in this summer and I saw her actually hit a squat at 155 uh, during the summer training. So if you're talking about improvements in the weight room, she's really impressed me and I know she's impressing her teammates on a daily basis in the weight room. Reach that arm straight out in front of you. Straight, lift your palm. So keep this arm straight the whole time and just lift it straight up, straight, straight, don't bend it, straight. So I'm one of the strength and conditioning coaches here at Northeastern and I'm primarily responsible for men's, women's soccer, track and field and swimming and diving. And I'm also overseeing the internship program here. And uh, I really see my major responsibility as being the person that helps these athletes truly reach their athletic potential. Sarah's great. She really, really definitely knows what she's doing. She was a Division I athlete herself, which definitely helps because she knows how demanding it can be and what your body needs. And she's really good at explaining the exercises and why we need to do them and what it's helping and what we'll get out of it. So a typical day for us strength coaches is uh, a little bit more than I think people people know. There's a lot of behind the scene work, work that goes into it. We communicate with coaches on a daily basis. Uh, we're communicating as a sports performance staff, so I have to know all the injuries on the team. Hopefully there aren't any, um, but if there are any injuries, I have to know where they did they occur the day prior to when we're training. Um, what kind of injury is it? How am I going to achieve a good lift with this person? If I know they, they are injured, how do I modify things for each individual athlete? With Coach Cahill coming in, she is a firm believer in that strength and conditioning. Um, it's not just all about on the field. It's when you get into the weight room and you do your work there that it will just reap benefits for you in the long run. And I, I think that we've all definitely started to believe that. This is really the space that you guys have where you leave everything outside the door and talent means nothing, okay? How well you do in here depends on one thing and that's your work ethic. There is no talent in this room. This has to do with how hard you work. 
So soccer being a, a very lower body uh, demanding sport, a lot of people think that we should only do lower body training. And so the way I look at it is soccer is a whole body sport. So it's, uh, it's really a lot of core training is what we do. One of the days we'll do more double leg work, the other day is more single leg demanding. Um, it's really important to get some good injury prevention exercises like ankle stability, uh, core stability, core strengthening exercises, knowing that the ankles and the knees are usually things that uh, soccer players tend to in injure, along with um, keeping the hips nice and strong. We don't want our first half of the year games to be a much higher fitness level than the second half of the year games. So you want to make sure that you keep them at the same level throughout the entire season. We want, to, we want them to play just as well at the end of the season as they are now. Also, I think it's a good opportunity in the weight room to get our non-starters who aren't playing as much as the other girls to be at the same fitness level at the ones that are getting a lot of playing time. So what I do is I make sure that the level of fitness that the girls that are playing are getting we do that exact same work in the weight room if needed, extra work, whatever we need to do to make sure everyone's on the same page so that if any player is asked to go on the field, they're ready to go. It's not just about you know pumping iron and getting huge. It's a lot of preventative stuff. Um, we've had so many knee injuries as most, uh, most teams do and so many injuries you know just all around every single part of your body. Coach Cahill has set up a program that is very um, it's very geared towards preventing those injuries, you know, and it's a lot of body weight stuff and it's a lot of stuff that you feel like you're not doing anything and then the next day you're so sore because it's muscles that you've never used before. Um, the further away we are from the game, the more intense the lifting will be, so we'll do um, more like heavier weights and more intense exercises on usually Tuesday and then as the week progresses we'll do more prehab and prevent injury prevention as well as stretching and foam rolling um, just to prepare us for the game. The women's soccer team uh, so far has really impressed me this year. Um, every time they come in the weight room they make me laugh which is really important. We have fun uh, but they really do take the training seriously and they believe in, in what we're trying to do with them and I think the more they believe in it the more they're going to actually get a benefit from it. So I'm really impressed by their work ethic. I think these girls would run through a brick wall if asked to and I'm really excited for us this season. We also have a few freshmen that came in and uh, definitely, definitely surprised us in a positive way. I shouldn't say I was surprised because the girls, uh, I expect a lot from them, but Kelsey McCarthy came in and said that her, um, her squat max was 140 and I actually put 155 on the bar um, just to see what she could do with it and she ended up squatting that 20 times. Uh, so that was really exciting for us to see. The team was all fired up and that's what they left the weight room with um, and it was, it was a great, great environment. The players and coaches are excited about the renovations currently taking place at the Cabot Center, integrating strength and conditioning and sports medicine into a unified sports performance center. Cabot is in the process of getting renovated. Uh, I can't tell you how excited our staff is about this renovation. Um, all the people on our staff is, have worked extremely hard on getting this done and the exciting part about it is that it's really a, a global approach to training. Um, the athletic trainers are going to be able to see what us strength coaches are doing and vice versa. There's no longer a solid brick wall separating us. Um, it's now glass so we're going to be able to really work as one team and get these athletes uh, where we need them to go. Later in the week, the Huskies headed across town to Boston University's Nickerson Field to take on the Terriers. The BU game was a bit of a struggle for us because we just came off of the UConn game and I think we thought we were really unstoppable and just going to go into BU and crush them, but uh, that wasn't the case and we needed to step up our game for BU because they're a great team. Um, they made the tournament last year and we knew that we had to work really hard to beat them just like we did UConn. At halftime I just was grabbing water and the coaches were huddled together and Tracy just wanted um, to know my input on what formation to play. There's like a huge gap in the midfield. Yeah, like I know like I'm not winning headers but I just feel like there's a enormous like well, we're, we're all spread out. We're thinking about better. playing a box. Yeah, that might, yeah. I mean, that might help, help. Um, we were playing 
three midfielders and we wanted to go to a box, which is four, so that we can maybe control the midfield a little bit better. And she wanted me to play center back um, and put Kelly into the midfield and just asked if that was where I felt comfortable playing and I didn't mind wherever she needed me on the field. I was going to do my best and try and pump up our team because we needed a little bit more intensity in our game. So I was just trying to help with any input she needed. The Huskies did not fare as well and the Terriers walked away with a 2-0 victory. And hopefully we can chalk this up to a learning experience that we can look back on and say, wow, we needed this game to wake up and, and build from, all right? Because obviously there wasn't any good feelings coming from this game at all, all right? So let's go home, all right, and start over. Join Huskies Unleashed next week for the fourth and final episode as we take an in-depth look at the team's incoming freshman class and their preparations and hopes for the new season. Slow clap for today. Huskies on three, Kelly's count, let's go. Huskies on three. One, two, three.